obviously to the Texas circuit yeah, to, uh, you months, started refereeing for, yeah. okay, for about four uh, months? I had worked three four. times in four months trying to get my foot in the door. How, how did you break into the full time and start earning a uh, study paycheck? Well, we remember the segment we did where I went to Charlotte mm -hmm. and did the Mid-Atlantic. It was the same thing there as Texas. Only worked three or four times because they had their full time referees. If somebody didn't show up, Tommy Young was their main guy, Stu Swartz, a couple other guys, the referee, Sonny Fargo, um, Teddy Long, was re uh, guys like that. Yeah. So I couldn't get in yeah. because they're That's not going to. a competition. Yeah, well, they're not going to fire somebody who's mm -hmm. been faithful to them yeah. uh, for five years and hire some kid unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I did it for three months as long as I could. I said, Dave, I appreciate you taking care of me. I you know, was blessed to go for six months on the road trying to get my foot in the door. Thank you, Mikey Johnson, all those guys. So uh, I'm leaving like August 10th. It's August 1st. So I'm doing the last nine days riding around with the guys. And Paul Jones came up to me. You know Paul Jones, mm -hmm. little uh, number one is mm -hmm. Florida State, Florida State champ. Um, he said, "Hey, Fonzie, come here." He said, uh, "I heard you're leaving, kid." I said, "Yeah." He said, "Why are you leaving?" I said, "Well, they got their full time reps. I can't get a break here. They're not gonna open the door for me unless somebody, you know, mess." But these guys are great, so I'm going home. He said, "We'll do this." He said, "I'm very good friends with Jack and Jerry Briscoe." Jerry's the assistant booker there, and Dusty's the booker. But I'm real good friends with Jerry. Just <clears> let him know when he get home, when he goes home, August 10th. When he, uh, when he get home, make an appointment with Charlie Lay. He's the office guy downstairs uh, to talk to Jerry. When you see Jerry, tell him that Paul Jones sent you, and you're living in Tampa now, and you worked in Texas, and you worked here, and you did that. And if they can use you anytime, Fine. If they can't, at least you tried. So I did a meeting. I go call up, but Jerry Briscoe receives me. I go upstairs, Port Auditorium, 106 North Albany in Tampa, 33607. Area code 251 2371 was the phone number back then. You can't, you don't forget <laughs> what those up. things, yeah. Um, because I was there for years, so I go up and I meet Jerry Briscoe, and he says, uh, Well, uh, Paul Jones uh, sent you, huh? He said, who have you worked for? Your referee. I said, yes, sir. I wore a nice suit. I look good. I'm a small kid. He says, uh, who you work for? I said, well, I work for Joe Blancher in uh, San Antonio. I work for the Von Erics in Dallas. I work for the Funks in uh, Amarillo. Mm -hmm. I work for George Scott, who was the booker for the Crockett's in Mid-Atlantic. Uh, I didn't tell him mm -hmm. uh, I only worked four shows, <laughs> but you know I was already yeah. seasoned by yeah. hanging out yeah. with the guys. That you knew the words. So, you, oh, yeah, people liked you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was well yeah. liked. I don't know about well, but I was liked uh, <laughs> for some reason. So he said, "Well, damn, uh, what's your name, Fonzie? I get a lot. Oh, well, Fonzie, you got the qualifications, mm -hmm. and you, Paul Jones recommended you, so yeah. you work for all these guys." Why wouldn't I hire you? The reason I'm not is because we got full-time guys here. Yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, we can hire you. But leave your number with Charlie Lay. This is on a Monday. Mm -hmm. This is Monday. I have the meeting. Leave your number with Charlie Lay. And in the summer, if we can use you, if we run a double shot, mm -hmm. we'll use you. Okay. And uh, so I left my number. I went there. Kind of happy because at least they took my number, mm -hmm. and this is the place I grew up in. Right. Said, wow. Yeah. Dusty's the Absolutely. booker. Yeah. I know who's the booker because yeah, I know cool. all the territories now. You know. In the area you can find places to stay. <laughs> Boom. And my homes here, my parents, mm -hmm. everybody. Um. So I left my number, and West Palm was on Monday, Tampa Tuesday, Wednesday Miami, Thursday Jacksonville, so on. So they had a, and, and business was on fire in the state of Florida in the eighties. Mm -hmm. I think this was May 1980, because I got hired in May of 95 for ECW, so that's why I know it was May. Mm -hmm. May 1980, big business. So the referee had the main event in the front seat, the semi main event in the back seat, and the third semi main event in the other back seat. So the referee's driving mm -hmm. 200 miles to do a show, a sold out show. Right. Uh, at West Palm 
auditorium, it's a round building in West Palm, right off of 95, sold out. His car breaks down, has a flat mm. on like Alligator Alley or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No spare tire. <laughs> He's got the three main event guys. They didn't make wow. the show. Wow. They did not make the show. Sold out. Dusty Rose was furious. Yeah. He fired the guy on the spot. Wow. He called up the building. There was no cell phones back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, there might have been, but they were big. The <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. Um, so, uh, finally got a hold of him and said, oh my God. So, well, no, no spare tire. You're fired. <laughs> Dusty told Charlie Lay, call that kid up, Fonzie. Have him come down Tuesday night, see if he's available. Yeah, cool. So, that was Lay a great opportunity my phone. I pick up the phone. Uh, Fonzie around. This is an old man retired. Mm -hmm. Been a wrestler for 30 mm -hmm. years from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Right. You know, he's an old guy walking like this. You know, the they use him <laughs> yep. as agents. Yep. Like, like Arnold Golden still works mm -hmm. for Vince and yep. out draws. Yep, yeah. You know, so they're loyal keep, keep to them, people. Yeah, keep them employed. Yeah. Keep so them the old guy says, uh, you know, I speak with Fonzie. I'm imitating him. But, you yeah, know, yeah. I'm imitating Dustin too, baby. So, um, <laughs> Fonzie around said, yes sir, this is Fonzie. He says, uh, Dusty wants to know if you can make it tonight at Fort Home Wrestling Armory to referee a few matches. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. So I went that night and I worked with Jody Hamilton, who was a mask assassin, mm -hmm. and his partner, another mask assassin, I don't think it was his name, but it might have been... Um, I'll tell you his name in a second. Against Dusty and Ron Bass or something. Big blowout. And Jody used to load his hood, mm -hmm. headbutt people that bleed. Huh? And they'd beat him one, two, three, yeah, rep yeah. didn't see him do the gimmick. So <laughs> they had it that night where the referee does see him load it and he headbutts the referee and it busted me open. I was bleeding uh, like a pig. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I did good that night. My first night, oh, good for all the, all the wrestlers. It's yeah. not usual to get color to get yeah, blood yeah, yeah. in wrestling sometimes yeah. you know once a month you might see it or mm -hmm. um but it's a big deal but color red brings green that's mm -hmm. the old saying red brings green so they like me and dusty says can you make it tomorrow night in miami mm -hmm. i said yes so i did miami show he said in miami dusty was a book he says can you make um, Thursday night in Jacksonville? I said, yeah. Yes, I can. Can you make it Friday night? <laughs> yes, this? I can. Can you make it this Saturday night? Yeah. Sunday was Orlando every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Saturday, Friday and Saturday were spot shows. Could have been right. the Bayfront Center. Could have been Lakeland Civic Center. Could have been somewhere. How much were they drawing back then? Like how many people? They're selling out. At, yeah. When I walked in, in 1980, May 1980, it was selling out. So how big is a sellout? Is, um, that, is that 500 um, people? Is that... How many? Is that 500 people? Is that 5,000 people? Well, I don't know. Um, the Bayfront Center in St. Pete holds several thousand people. Okay. We run a special show every four months, like a Friday or mm -hmm. Saturday. Usually on Saturday would be a big show. Like yeah. that. We would sell out wow. 8,229 people. Wow. wow. On a daily, on a weekly basis, the four home arrests in Armory would hold 3,746 paid, wow. Wow. sold out. 18 weeks in a row. Yeah. Eddie Graham Sports Complex in Orlando. Eddie Graham owned the building. So they were making very good money there mm -hmm. because they didn't have to pay rent. They didn't have to pay the cost. And it, it would hold, it was like a big barn, aluminum, yeah. huge barn that held several thousand people. I think their sellout was uh, 5,500 wow. paid. That's yeah. a lot. We yeah. were selling out week after week after week. And I remember Dusty was on Cloud Nine because he was a booker. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was the boss. Yeah. And he was yeah. writing the storylines. Mm -hmm. And he was getting pats on the back. He's and we had wrestlers tips. from all over the world calling in trying to get a mm -hmm. job in the state of Florida because we were red hot. Yeah. But we only had room for 18 to 20 guys mm -hmm. and two referees. So Sunday, that Sunday, you know, I got hired. Um, I got hired Tuesday. I worked Tuesday, Monday, Monday, uh, Monday. Monday, the guy got fired. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Jerry Briscoe came up to me, not Dusty, and gave me a big hug and said, congratulations, we hired you full-time. That's awesome. That's how I got my start, right there.